Well, where do I begin? I guess from the beginning. To Teddy, my best friend. It was my junior year of high school, and you probably had no idea who I was. So that's why it took so much of my courage to ask you to go to homecoming with me. But when you said yes, that's all it took. When we first met, I thought to myself, who is this guy? You literally showed up to my house to take me to homecoming, my first time actually meeting you. We were nothing alike, but it turned out to be the best thing that's happened to us. Looking back, that one simple question was the best decision I have made in my life. I love you for being the most thoughtful, selfless person that you are, and I promise to love you as much as you love me, even if that means I have to share number one spot with Eugene. You are the one that I want to call my wife. The day is finally here. The day that we have talked about for so long. As I lay here, thinking of things to say, the only thing that I can tell you is that I will try my best at being someone you can always lean on when you feel weak. Someone who will try to provide for you when times are tough. I will be someone who you can always count on. You are always there for me, and whenever we have a problem, you always have a solution or reassure me that everything will be all right. You've helped me grow as a person, and I pray that we continue to help each other grow in our years to come. You are my best friend, and I cannot wait for us to start our life together. Now here we are today, getting married, moving into our new home, and hopefully starting a family together. I wouldn't want to do this with anyone else. I love you so much, and I can't wait to keep loving you as we grow old together. You make me feel like the luckiest man alive, and I am more than honored to be the one you get to spend the rest of your life with. I know you love me, but just always remember that I will always love you more. You're gorgeous. Thank you. A wedding is one of life's great moments. A time of solemn commitment as well as good wishes, feasting, and joy. Send your blessing upon Ted and Sage and all who are joined in marriage, that rejoicing in your will and continuing under your protection, they both live and grow in your love all their days through Jesus Christ our Lord. The disciple John tells us how Jesus shared in such an occasion at Canaan and gave there a sign of new beginnings as he turned water into wine. Marriage is intended by God to be a creative relationship as this is blessing enables husband and wife to love and support each other in good times and in bad. And to share in the care and upbringing of children. For Christians, marriage is also an invitation to share life together in the spirit of Jesus Christ. It is based upon a solemn, public, and lifelong commit covenant between a man and a woman, declared and celebrated in the presence of God and before witnesses. A triangle is the strongest structure known to humanity. It stands the test of time. Likewise, the joining of a man and woman under Christ is the basis for a marriage that can last a lifetime. The husband and wife on an equal plane with God above and centered over their life together. On this their wedding day, the bride and bridegroom face each other, make their promises and receive God's blessing. Marriage is something so beautiful and so wonderful that we have to look at we we have to look after it because it's forever. It's meant to be forever. And as a couple, you, Ted and Sage, you'll face many many trying times and and you'll overcome those trying times. And, uh, but I want to give you three words that maybe might help you along the way to remember. It's the three, these three words I think are some of the most important words in any marriage. It's please, thank you, and I'm sorry. So uh, Ted and Sage, would you please take each other's hands and repeat those words, please, 
thank you, I'm sorry to each other. Please, thank, thank you. you, I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's, that's awesome. See, they're getting off to a great start already. So, uh, but the thing of it is, it's not just Ted and Sage who need to remember this. All of us need to remember this. So I want all of you to say those same words too, please. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Please. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. So you are witnesses and participants in this ceremony of, of, uh, of Ted and Sage and express your support by your presence and your prayers. Your support does not end today. <clears throat> this couple, couple will value your continued encouragement and prayers in the days and years ahead of them. In the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have come together to witness the marriage of Ted and Sage, to pray for God's blessing on them, and to share their joy and celebrate their love. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty, which we should uphold in honor. It enriches society, and it strengthens community. No one should ever enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently, responsibly, in the sight of Almighty God. Ted and Sage are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to each other and make solemn vows, and in the token of this, they will each receive and give a ring. So we pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfill God's purpose to the whole of their earthly life together. Now the vows that you are about to make are made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and who knows all of the secrets of our hearts. So uh, if there's any reason that any of you, that you think that you should not be uh, uh, married, please, please declare it now. So, okay. All right, well, since we're past that awkward part. Uh, <laughs> Ted, do you take stage to be your wife? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, forsaking all others, and be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? Please answer, I do. I do. And Sage, likewise, do you take Ted to be your husband? Do you promise to love him and comfort him? To honor and protect him? To forsaking all others? Be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Answer, I do. I do. <laughs> do you, the families, friends of Ted and Sage, do you promise to support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come. Please answer, we do. We do. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? My wife and I. I'm going to read to you from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. It's known as the love chapter. This is from the Apostle Paul. Starting with verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life, 
pour out your blessings upon Ted and Sage that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship in holiness and commitment to each other. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now come the vows. And I invite you in the presence of God and his people to, to offer up your vows now. So we're going to start with you, Ted. All right. I, Ted. I, Ted. Take you, Sage. Take you, Sage. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have. To have. And to hold. And to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. For poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. Okay, Sage. Okay. okay. I Sage. I Sage. Take you, Ted. Take you, Ted. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. For poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God I make this vow. In the presence of God I make this vow. May I have the ring? Thank you very much, buddy. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Ted and Sage a symbol of unending love and faithfulness to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless this couple. Now, Ted, you start. Sage. Sage. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honor you. With my body I honor you. And all that I am. And all that I am. I give to you. I give to you. And all that I have. And all that I have. I share with you. I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, place the ring on our finger. Sage. Ted. Ted. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honor you. With my body I honor you. And all that I am. And all that I am. I give to you. I give to you. And all that I have. And all that I have. I share with you. I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God before this congregation, Ted and Sage have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by joining of hands and by giving and receiving of rings. Therefore, I proclaim them as husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Blessed are you, O Lord God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love and peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Ted and Sage and their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, awake and asleep, in joy and sorrow, in life and death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. We ask this to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, holy and eternal source of life, in spring of love, we thank and praise you for bringing Ted and Sage to this day, and we pray for them. May their marriage be life-giving and life lifelong. 
enriching, enriched by your presence and strengthened by your grace. May they bring comfort and confidence to each other in faithfulness and in trust. May the hospitality of their home bring refreshment and joy to all around them. May their love overflow to their neighbors in need and embrace those in distress. May they discern your word, your, your word and, and your order and your purpose for their lives. May the power of your Holy Spirit lead them in truth and defend them in adversity. May they nurture their family with devotion, see their children grow in body, mind, and spirit, and come at last to the end of their lives with hearts content and in joyful anticipation of heaven. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Now, Ted and Sage, I would like to be the first one to give you a gift. Okay, and uh, this is a cross for your new home to hang on your wall. It's because uh, a, a home, as the Greeks say, it's ecclesiola, okay, which means little church. It is a holy place. Your home is inhabited by people who belong to God and is a place of forg where forgiveness is taught and practiced and where your faith is passed on from generation to the next generation and Christ's love is exemplified. So your home should reflect all of this with a prominent sign of Christ's sacrificial love, the cross. So. I'm going to leave this with one of your, because you've got your, you're, you're going to have your hands full. So if you could hold Thank on you. to that yeah. for her. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now let us pray as we come into conclusion. God, our Father, we thank you for our families and friends, for the love that we share and the joy of our marriage. In the busyness of each day, keep our eyes fixed on you and what is real and important in life and help us to be generous with our time and our love and our energy. Strengthened by our union, help us to serve and comfort those who suffer. We ask this in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ted and Sage, having witnessed your vows of love to one another, it is my joy to present to, to you and to all gathered here as husband and wife. Ted, do you kiss your bride. the weird part about it it's it's just that uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> granny will tell you she knows um but uh it's <laughs> this means a lot to me and i'm uh like really lucky to have bubba as a brother-in-law and i mean it's just a it's, it's great he's literally the little brother that i never got to have 
growing up, my brother was four years older than me, so everybody was always like running away from me and, um, you know, trying to just ditch me because they didn't want to hang out with me. Um, so I was either the third wheel, the fifth wheel, the whatever. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just, it's been really cool getting to know Bubba. When I met his sister, I wasn't close to him. I barely knew of him. I actually knew of him because of a party that he wasn't supposed to be at. <laughs> and we can talk about that now, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and then, oh yes, and then there was Joe as well. <laughs> but we can have a conversation about that later. Um, so, at first Bubba and I had met each other and it was here and there. We would see each other and whatever, but he ended up moving in with Sean and I. And it was really cool because that's when I got to see what type of person he was. And he helped us with everything. I mean, and the idea of being a friend. And uh, helping us raise our daughter. It was just awesome. And um, I can never give him enough thanks for that. I really appreciate it. So he asked me to do this, and um, I was obviously more than excited. I, I was like, yeah, of course, it's not even a question. And uh, this whole speech, everything that I tried to come up with, nothing was right. Like, I just couldn't figure it out. So I figured, I'm like, well, It'll, it'll work. And um, I had some bullet points and some thises and thats, and I tried it every single way that I could come up with and it just didn't work. I knew that I would sit here and talk way too much and <laughs> everybody would be like, oh my God, is this ever gonna end? So I also knew that I didn't wanna cry like a little girl. I was trying my best to not do that and it's not easy. But um, in the idea of just Sage and Bubba, I, I really, I've got to know Sage over vacations and she's awesome with Ellie and Mikey both. And if you didn't know this about her, she actually has another name, it's Stage. Um, <laughs> that's, that's Mikey's name for her, but uh, we've, been, we've been trying to break that. But Stage is, um, she's awesome. She's a, a really great girl. And I'm just super happy for both of them. And um, I'm just glad we're a family now. So I love you guys, and I, I just wish the best for you. So Let's have a great night. Hell of a job. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin, and I'm one of Sage's Maid of Honors. If you don't already know, we are cousins who are only 24 days apart. So I've been thinking about what I was going to say today for 25 years and five months now. Growing up with three little brothers, you can imagine Sage and Sierra being the sisters I never had. And let me tell you all, we had the best childhood thanks to our parents and grandparents. We had sleepovers every weekend, either on the farm or in Parma, and we would do the weirdest things. <laughs> From making dance videos to pretending to be Dr. Phil. <laughs> Shawnee and Sammy, you're lucky I don't pull up those videos. <laughs> <laughs> and Grandpa, I'm sorry for all the pranks we played on you over the years. I must tell one of my favorite stories from Dana and Lee's farm. Okay. It was hard for me to choose because we have so many, but this is from when Sage and I were about 10, and James and Sierra were like 7 and 8. But Sage needed to go outside and feed the horses, and she needed to get more hay down from this 10-foot oh loft up in the barn. And we were already told not to go up there all at once, but I can assume you guys know we did it anyways. <laughs> um, and as James was climbing up the ladder, it shifted down. Luckily, we pulled him up, but at this point, all four of us were standing up there with no way of getting down. <laughs> so our first thought was to scream as loud as we could in hopes of Dana or Lee hearing us, but that didn't work. So then we decided to sit in a circle and play bubblegum bubblegum in a dish and nominate someone to jump. <laughs> so we threw all of the hay bales onto the bed of the, of the barn and unfortunately, Sage lost. 
<laughs> so she was the one that had to do it. We all hugged her as if we'd never see her again. <laughs> we told her how much we loved her. She had the courage to do it and dropped. <laughs> So we all gasped as she jumped into a bed of hay just to do a little roll to stand back up laughing. <laughs> as we got older, we would have bonfires and go to each other's friends' parties, which was always a blast. So one day, Sage told me she had some crush on Ted. I met him shortly after, and I knew at that point that they would be together for a long time. Here we are, eight years later, at their wedding, and I couldn't imagine anybody better than Ted for Sage. Ted, your kind personality and selfless acts don't go unnoticed, like picking up my bar tab without me knowing and getting us home safely on many occasions. <laughs> Thank you for loving our Sage and always putting her first. Sage, our relationship is one that I'll forever cherish. You have one of the kindest, silliest, and most generous hearts. From all of our stupid arguments we've had to all the good times like playing sing star in the basement or laughing until we cried. You've always been my shoulder to lean on and I'm forever grateful for that. Your love is an inspiration for us all and I wish you both a lifetime of love, happiness, babies and farm animals. <laughs> Everyone raise a glass. Cheers to Mr. and Mrs. Bowersock. I'm Shelby, I've been friends with Sage for hmm, 12 years now. A long, long time, okay? So anyways, we met in Mr. Calum's class in uh, seventh grade history class, more so I copied Sage's uh, history test every week because I wasn't into the history thing. Um, so anyway, Sage and I became good old friends. She's been the sister I've never had. Um, she came on family vacations with us. My grandpa calls her Paige because he can't really hear too well, but he loves Paige and Paige is his, uh, his uh, third granddaughter here. Okay, so anyways, Sage has been fantastic. Um, Sage and Ted met. Ted asked her to homecoming, I'm pretty sure. She didn't even know who the heck he was, but he was like, I saw that woman and I like her. She's coming to homecoming with me, okay? So she said, I'm going to homecoming with this Ted kid and I don't really know who he is and they've been together ever since. Ted, uh, I, I'm sorry, I've always third-wheeled it with you guys. Uh, we've kind of been sister wives here for up until now, but I'm engaged and I found myself a new husband, but if we uh, don't work out, I'm coming back to the sister wife thing, okay? So uh, save that third room for me in your new house. Anyways, so I, I can't imagine Sage and Ted being with anybody else than who they've been with. I mean, they have grown through many different phases of their lives together. And I encourage you guys to love each other through the next couple of phases you're going to have through your years. Don't try and change each other. Just love each other through your growing phases, okay? I mean, Ted has paid for my dinners, my bar tabs. Like Caitlin says, he gets us home. He's our DD. He pays for our stuff. He's a good man, all right? And I know your dad would be so proud of you, Ted. So, so proud of you. He's a good man. And I just want to share one fun story of when we were at Kent. Uh, Hanging out with the good old Teddy here, okay? Uh, Jakob and Brian back there, you can attest to this. Yeah, uh, we were up at Kent and Ted's such a good man, he lended Sage her car, okay? She's a little spoiled if you haven't noticed. Uh, this car didn't have the automatic lights like we're all uh, used to and we pulled out of the Taco Bell and uh, somebody pulled us over because somebody didn't turn the lights on. And so the, the state, he pulled us over and he said, ma'am, uh, do you know why I'm pulling you over today? She said, no, I don't really understand what's going on. He said, do you know how to turn your lights on in your car? And she said, this is my boyfriend's car. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to turn them on. My lights are automatic in my car. <laughs> and he said, ma'am, can you get out of the car? She puts it in park and it kind of jolts back. He said, do you know how to put the car in park? And she said, I don't really know. And she gets out and she's sitting in the back seat and I'm Snapchatting Ted thinking this is hysterical. I said, your wife's in the back seat of the car, cop car. And I'm thinking it's hysterical. Needless to say, no big deal. We get out and we go home. But Ted's always been a good guy. He's always take care of Sage and Sage take care of Ted. They're, they're two good birds for each other, okay? And I, I thank you all for coming here today to celebrate their love. And I wish you guys nothing but happiness and love in the future. And I love you both so much. Thank you, Ted, for never bitching about me uh, third wheeling with you guys. I really appreciate you for that, okay? So raise a toast and for these two lovebirds.
All right, Mr. and Mrs. Bowersock, we love you both. Thank you, guys. Hello, everyone. I'm Sierra, Sage's little sister. I'm going to keep this short and sweet because I know I'm going to cry. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> nice to each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think I surprise anyone when I say that I love and look up to my sister. Sage is worthy of all the love in the world and I'm so happy that she has found that in Ted. Sage and Ted, you guys complement each other in the most perfect way and I'm so happy to see where this next chapter takes you both. I know that Ted will take care of my sister and that Sage will take care of him. And as a little sister, I'm so proud of you, Sage. Congrats to you both. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get this, I promise. It's such a good speech that he has to make this. Oh, shit, Ted. I don't know. Been a privilege. Oh, God. I had it down pat. I cried like a baby. <laughs> all right, okay, I'm going to start all over. I stand, I stand here today before a humble man. Although I may not be Ted's biologic father, I am honored to be call him my son. May the two of you may have happiness and fulfillment and cherish each other. Congratulations, Mr. and Ted Bowersock. We get the gist. We get the gist.
Flying on a jet plane, sipping on some champagne, yeah. Plan on making memories, cruising in a Bentley, yeah. Can we leave all of the past behind? Oh, everything looks better in your eyes. Take me back to all those summer nights. Oh, out in LA chasing city lights. When I'm with you, we go in all night. No sleep. I don't need nobody, cause nobody else gets me like you do. Baby, we don't tell nobody. We don't need nobody, cause it's you and me. Just you and me. Just you and me. No, we don't tell nobody. You and me. Just you and me. Just you and me Sunsets in the valley Oh, it makes me happy, yeah Malibu at midnight Underneath the moonlight, yeah Can we leave all of the past behind? Oh, everything looks better in your eyes Take me back to all the summer nights City lights When I'm with you we go in